In this video, we will learn to classify compounds into different categories. Once we classify compounds correctly, then we can name those compounds correctly as well. In Chem 1251, we place compounds into three different categories. We learn to recognize compounds as ionic, molecular, and acidic. We base our classification scheme on the types of atoms that are present in the compounds. So let's quickly review types of atoms. On a periodic table like this one found in the text on page 48, we see elements placed into different categories. The metals are shown in tan or gray, nonmetals are shown in blue, and metalloids are shown in orange. While these categories serve a definite purpose, when we work with compounds, we will only have to be able to distinguish the metals from the nonmetals. So to simplify things, imagine a regular stair-step formation that proceeds from boron through silicon, arsenic, tellurium, and then astatine, like the dark line that's shown here. This line divides the atoms commonly known as metals from the atoms commonly known as nonmetals. Everything that lies to the left of the stair, with the exception of hydrogen, is considered a metal. metal excuse me. And everything that lies to the right of the stair is considered a nonmetal. Remember that hydrogen is considered to be a nonmetal. Ionic compounds are compounds that consist of at least one metal atom bonded to at least one nonmetal atom. Two examples of ionic compounds are sodium chloride, NaCl, and copper 1 oxide, Cu2O. Both of these examples consist of a metal bonded to a nonmetal. This is true of virtually all ionic compounds. We have a metal and a nonmetal together. In the chemical formulas of ionic compounds, the metal generally appears first and the nonmetal generally appears last. These compounds ultimately contain at least one ionic bond attaching the atoms together. Molecular compounds are different from ionic compounds in that molecular compounds consist of only nonmetal atoms. Two examples of molecular compounds are water, H2O, and carbon dioxide, CO2. The atoms in molecular compounds are held together with covalent bonds, not ionic bonds. Again, Molecular compounds are composed of nonmetals only. Because there are fewer nonmetals, it might seem like there are fewer molecular compounds that are possible, but that's not the case. The wonderful nonmetal carbon can form a wide variety of compounds with just hydrogen and oxygen. At the outset, Acids look like molecular compounds in that acids are composed of only nonmetals. One way to define an acid is to say that acids produce hydrogen ions when solved in water. Using this definition, we can say that acids will contain hydrogen and some other nonmetal. However, Acids are held together by ionic bonds, something that we find in ionic compounds. A couple of examples of acids are HCl, hydrochloric acid, and H2SO4, sulfuric acid. Notice that all of the atoms are nonmetals in both of these compounds, and hydrogen is the first atom to appear in the chemical formula of each. A few important notes. First, water is not an acid. Even though it begins with hydrogen, an acid, and is composed of only nonmetals. Second, 
Acids produce hydrogen ions when dissolved in water, which is why we should technically show the state of an acid as aqueous. Third, there are other ways to define an acid. This is just one way of looking at this class of compound. In this video, we have discussed how to classify compounds based on the types of atoms that are present in the compounds. Once you can do this, you're ready to learn the rules of nomenclature or naming compounds. If you feel you are confident in your ability to classify compounds, please take the electronic assessment in Moodle over this video. You can view the video again if you like, and if you have any questions, please direct them to your instructor.